Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I'm going to play another 1510 game. This is video four for the Improve Your Chess Rating playlist. Okay, so facing e4, opponent's rating is 1832 for this game. Let's go with a Karokan for this game. Just looking to put a pawn on d5. Uh, maintain a pawn on d5. So let's see what we get. d4, knight c3. There's also c4. Okay. Pawn duo. Challenge it right away. The consistent follow up. Okay, so I did have couple options there. Capture right away. It's one of my favorite lines to face. The exchange variation. Advanced is the usually the most testing, so my reply to knight c3 pretty much has to be to take on d4 and break up the pawn duo. It's an interesting case early on where there really isn't a wide range of moves. This guy can't get out just yet. Uh, playing this, you don't want to do that. <laughs> so we want to get the bishop outside of the pawn chain in the caro, and playing this move is only asking for e5 with the tempo, so got to break it up. And go from here, so couple options. One is to immediately play bishop f5, but the one I have most experience with is knight to f6. There's also this odd-looking move h6. I'm not recalling at the moment what the name of this is. Um, one of the ideas behind h6 is to play bishop f5 next. And if there's the counter-punching knight g3, you could go all the way back to h7. The main line goes like this, and then there's these h4 moves. h5 with tempo. Okay, the bishop can be bothered on g6. I don't think I want to go with h6, though, so I think I'm probably going to go for knight f6 straight away. Yeah, let's go for this one. So, let's see first of all if there's the capture. That's usually the way forward. To saddle black with doubled pawns, and it's not... Okay, so knight to g3. I did have an option after the capture, and the one I'm most familiar with is the Bronstein Larson taking with the g-pawn and playing with this. Not so common structure very early on but we're not there the knight simply retreated so bishop g4 and yeah i pretty much have to do this no that's too strong i don't have to do that i could consider h5 yeah h5 is interesting h5 and h4. Normally, you know, if this was a blitz game or a bullet game, I'd immediately play to g4 with my bishop, but I want to try and play as best I can. So what is objectively best? h5, threatening to scare the knight away, maybe provoke a weakness, and only then bishop to g4. If I play h5, knight f3, and they allow this kick, Knight there. This pawn is going to be really disruptive. Mm. Let's see. H5, H4. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, the more I look at it, I don't know if I really want to weaken my G5 square. So I'll just play it solid, I guess we can say. I'm not going to make any crazy pawn moves. Weakening G5. Just development, and I'm prepared. This this is a guy that I view as expendable. 
my light square bishop. I'll have pawns around to watch over my light squares. Okay, if f3, I was prepared to back off. Knight takes, knight takes, and this pawn is kind of in the way of the knight. So, I don't have too much choice here. Pretty much have to exchange light square bishops. Okay. Um, I was thinking initially to take with the queen, but maybe they were concerned about queen takes d4. Not normally one to be greedy and grab a pawn, but uh, yeah, maybe I would be able to get away with taking that pawn and things would be cool. Yeah, if this pawn was already here, I should point out, and then let's say there's this capture, I think the queen is the preferred way to recapture on e2 because this knight would really like to get to f3. So as it is right now, this furthest advanced pawn for white is not yet connected with any other white piece. So if the knight was on f3, we could see a nice jump into the e5 square. I can make use of one of these two pivots, but that's not the case here. How do I want to play this? e6 and then shoot for c5? Or do I want to consider maybe a fianchetto? I don't think about I don't think I want to go for a fianchetto. So I'm gonna go with just something very simple. Um this is a move I could regain the pawn like that, but I like this move for a couple of quick reasons. The bishop's eyes are opened, and I keep a watchful eye over that f5 square. So right now this knight is the worst piece in the game. I'd say it doesn't really have a safe move <laughs> right now, besides going to the corner. I was pointing out this straight away. Am I okay with that? This, what if that? Maybe I need a little bit more support. If I could get these two moves in, that would be great. Okay, so if this, I think that is a good reply. And if I'm capturing, then this knight is improving and it's bothersome. I'm not able to get in knight to c6 so fast. So, I mean, I don't think I have to challenge this pawn. I could probably play within the structure some. And I think I'm going to go for that. Um, so where to go with my bishop? One of these two. I guess... I guess I'll I guess I'll pick e7. Not entirely sure why. e7 instead of d6. Maybe I'm not so welcome to a dark square bishop exchange. I don't know. This guy's out, maybe I could think about a, a tempo against the bishop at some stage. I think it's at some point c4 might be good for white. Okay. C4 is more ambitious. C3, more solid. Just hang on to your fourth rank pawn. Okay, so... Bishop there. Let's go with castles. Not sure what I want to do with this guy just yet. I haven't forgot about C5. I might play it a little bit later. Okay, so they are going with C4. And... Maybe queen c7 rook here, or still just kind of maneuvering. I think we might be in for a long game. Okay, let's connect my knights. So I don't have anything special here. I think white is the side who's slightly better right now. These are always useful moves within this structure. It's uh, looks to maybe plant upon one day on a3, maybe provoke some weakness. If I a3, I have a4, and I have some clamp on the light squares. There's also, okay, so this, this all of a sudden becomes a little bit more appealing, but not right away. I do have to address this threat on b7, I believe. My knee-jerk reaction is to play queen b6 with caution. 
because at some point there could be that, but okay, so this queen takes, I would not mind seeing that. Okay, let's offer a queen exchange. Let's see what white does. I don't think there's one scan I did just before playing that was to see if there's some wonderful queen move, you know, that well, let's say here with check, and then all of a sudden this could hit, but there isn't a a fast strike like that in the position. But it's a it's a quick thought that just ran through my mind before making that move. So this would not be a good decision now, it'd just be the loss of a pawn. I would exchange queens and then chop away on d5. I have plenty of support over this point. My bishop on e7 is unprotected. This could maybe be an issue if the rook is on the half-open file. Possibly some knight jump into f5. There's a lot of clearing out that white would need to do before that's even a threat. This could be useful, or this, half-open file. This type of regroup, regrouping is not uncommon. Okay, so they are ducking the queen exchange, so I have to be on the lookout now for d5. So my queen has to find a new square, and I don't think she has anything better than to go to c7. I'm prepared to meet bishop f4 with bishop d6. Now, this is... Not not in this position, but sometimes this could be a move. Uh, it is very weakening for the d5 square. If this move is to be played, it would normally be with an eye on planting a knight into the d6 square at some point, but white is a long ways off from doing that. Like if c4 and this knight could somehow get to... If c5 and then the knight could get to c4, it coordinates really well. But that's a, that's a long ways off. Okay, so I was pointing this move out earlier. Let's play it, a5. Keep an eye on the clock. It's grabbing a little space on the queen side. Okay, so do I want to play this move? I think I do. To be a little careful. Um, all right, so it could be attacked a second time, but I would have queen there. I'm gonna go for that. So now if ever this move is in there, this guy would become isolated and probably quickly drop off. So I have a slight this this last sequence, I think I have some very slight pulls structurally speaking. I wouldn't be afraid to enter um, a very simplified position. So if we were to exchange all um, all minor pieces and enter a heavy piece specific ending, I think you know I'm a, I'm a real big fan of the the resulting structure. So prep work for this advance. I think a healthy move is maybe rook here or queen there. How do I want to play it? Maybe let's start with rook here. Not afraid of this break. This takes, takes, exchange queens, knight there. So this is probably not the best move. I don't know, maybe this one, maybe that one. Bishop f4, I could challenge it or, or play here. I have my eye on this. Knight c3, queen a5. Need to hang on to this pawn, and it can't be hit a third time. Okay, so they're making a flight square. There also, there's some stability now for the bishop. This move was never really crossing my mind. It does weaken the dark squares. Okay. Hmm. Okay, maybe, maybe now I get my queen to a little more active post. Yeah, let's go here. I, I mean, at, at some point this queen could move and then this might be an idea, you know, and then the rook is all of a sudden hitting my queen. So I think she's safer here. She has some nice flexibility from a5. I think this might be a move to question her straight away and there could be the 
Uh, the bishop could look to reroute on c3 and start to observe some of my kingside squares, or at least hint at this idea to break with the d5. I should also be mindful of some pawn sacrifice with, uh, let's say, this, 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 and when I take with my knight, maybe there's some fancy knight move at some stage undermining my knight support. This, this pawn could be overloaded in some cases, trying to watch over f5 and a knight on d5, but my queen is there supporting that. In order, in order to justify these two rook moves, I think white really needs to get this move in. But it's a bit tricky to get that in. Pawn move-wise, I thought about this. This was probably the first thing I thought of as soon as h3 was there, kind of saying, all right, it's your move. I, I did the same thing. I have a flight square as well. h2, h7 are the flight squares. Okay, so my queen is hit. I don't have any great moves along the fifth rank. They're all covered. So let's go with this. I'll put some pressure on this point. I pointed out bishop c3. That's not there right now because of the pressure on c4. Um, I'm wondering a bit about b5. Okay, so they're kind of just going back. Uh, let's see. So what about b5? What would b5 accomplish? Pry open the d5 square. But I am opening up this, so it's kind of tricky. I wonder if I could maneuver my knight. What am I, where am I even going, though, with that? Not sure. Okay, I think I am going to go for b5, so let's see. A lot to consider with the structural changes. b5 takes, takes with the pawn. And I am really well coordinated. I'm opening up this file, but I do have an eye on this maneuver. Knight b6 into d5. If I could get that construction, I'd be very happy. Also worth, okay, I think, well, oh, let me also point out, I think this, there might be that move. Yeah, but then I could still go here and here. I get that similar construction. Ah, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm not sure about it entirely. Let's see, first of all, what White's reaction is. I think this would be a very common move, although I don't know that it's best. Common because, you know, you're... Got that rook on c1. You want to open the file, right, on the c? On the c line, but is it really best? So we'll find out. Um, this is, you know, if the tension is maintained, I could increase the pressure with knight to b6. So we will see. Down on time, as usual. Even some situation where I might lose a pawn, there could be compensation. Okay, so I think that that is an excellent uh, decision. Let's see. My idea was to play knight d5, so let's play knight d5 right now. Be a little careful. If uh, some knight is able to go here and I can't capture it, this is... You know, I, I don't ever really want to have to play this move and weaken two of these square. Uh, f6 and h6 with still three minor pieces around if any pawn move that but as of right now i'm not and i don't feel that there's a need to uh create a flight square just yet i would not mind a queen exchange i would not mind an ending i pointed out earlier about this pawn clamping down on this structure, I could also look at it as having a better bishop. Ties in well with my fixed pawn. So this could be a long-term problem. The tension is going to have to shift. Well, that's too strong of a word. I was going to say have to shift towards the king side, but uh, I could maybe shoot for a pawn break here. I think for starters, I want to get this knight here so 
Maybe, maybe this. Yeah, I don't think the rook is purposeful on e8 anymore, so it's a slower position, just trying to find ways to improve a hair, inch by inch. Might have a knight exchange, it seems right around the corner, one way or the other. Knight e4 seems sensible, sensible like a, a queen exchange, or a one knight exchange and a queen improvement. She could pivot towards the king side. I think I'd like to reroute my queen, maybe get her on d5. If I could exchange both knights, I think that that would be wonderful. Because then I could pivot about on this d5 square with my queen, with my rook. Um, I could put my bishop on this square to watch over for watch out for any rook move that might challenge my queen on d5. So knight exchanges are welcome to me. Um, that's the main one I'm thinking about. I'd love to see both knights come off. Yeah, okay, so bishop there. Hmm, not really on my radar. What's the idea behind it? I'm not sure. Because it never see, ends up seeing the world if my knight remains here. So, what to do? Move my queen, where to? I guess here. I don't know if there's a great difference. For some reason I was thinking queen c8 first, but whatever. I think in the end I want to Want to be on this square? Yeah, probably best to keep the direct connection between the rooks. I also maybe hint at playing b4. And this is a possible pawn break that white has to maybe weigh. I would love to see this pawn move chop, and then I could put all my attention on the weak pawn a3. This is rock solid. This knight is under control. Again, this knight right into this square, I'm thinking. If there's a best piece in the position, it's probably this guy. Okay, queen there, headed for maybe this knight jump or to stop the b4 advance. Maybe that. Okay. Let's go here. Now I'm stopping a knight exchange. Before I was just saying I was welcome to it, but... It's a slight improvement for my queen. Now there's no good forward knight move. I wonder if I should have considered h6. No. Yeah, I want to probably just keep control over that knight jump. What, in what other way could I improve? I have to watch out maybe in some positions, you know, bishop a5, so I can't be going with the a rook. On this half open file, I get skewered. So that's something to keep in mind. The battery. How to improve from here. I, mean, I could try this maneuver. Not sure where we're going from there. Maybe some rerouting for white. This guy to the half open file. Maybe if I don't have any fear of a knight getting to this square, I could think about putting the bishop there. Okay, so that's a little bit unusual. Hmm. Now, as much as I like my knight on d5, I may want to consider capturing the bishop. I could force a queen exchange then. This queen takes, queen here. As long as both knights can't coordinate on d6 directly, I should be fine covering the weakest square in my camp on d6. I could also try something like this. Bishop a5 would win the queen. That seems a little too fancy. I think nearby, there's this idea. Is now the time for a flight square? 
Maybe I get the flight square in now. Yeah, let's go for this right now. Maybe this is a move at some stage. So, we'll see. Could show up. Let's say knight c3 takes, bishop takes, knight there. And then there's knight to e4. Now, these guys are at a, a bit of a standoff right now. Big fight over the e4 point. Barely any exchanges in this game. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so if I try some maneuver like this, the knight hops into e4 straight away. Okay. Well. Let's see. Maybe, maybe this, and then this idea to take queen here. I'm going to go for that. Be careful. As mentioned earlier, some, some fancy knight move. Also, this move is running through my mind. I don't know that it's great, but... With this pawn still on h7, I was prepared to meet a move like f4 with g6. But then there could be the reply f5. And I take on f5 somehow. Maybe with the f pawn, and then there's queen takes there, so to keep that in mind. We'll see. Very tight game. Very, very level. I don't know that there's been any tactical misses by either side up until this point. Just a light square bishop exchange and a pawn exchange. Pretty close to a full board. Could also consider queen f4 if this knight moves. Should point that out. I think I do like that. Knight c3, queen f4, takes, takes. Knight d3 might be a move. If the queens are off, I could maybe think about having my f pawn go to f5. I could play king f7, but to play f5 now with the queens on, that's way too weakening. But these two moves would be nice to get in, even, even though it weakens this square. I have knights around covering some important squares. Okay, rook c2. Its purpose is not so sure. Maybe I play rook d7 first. Seems like white's struggling to find a, produ a productive move. I'm going to go with this for starters. Remain flexible. Defending my bishop. Maybe preparing this at some point, okay. Maybe this, this, and then bishop here. Or the idea to take and bishop a5. Keep an eye on the clock. Yeah. As much as I want to maybe get the queens off with this maneuver, don't think it's right. My knight on d5 is more valuable than the bishop on b4. Slow going. That's how it is sometimes. Still no good forward knight moves besides knight c3. I wonder if this is maybe a maneuver. As soon as that guy moves, though, I think I'm going to run in for that. Bishop there, and if I am allowed to capture, the pawn would have to take. Then I could think about a break. And I should be quick to take over control of the A-file. So, queen there. Not sure what the story is with that. So now I am... Whenever wonder if they see this idea. They have to take with the pawn if I take the bishop. This move... Or this within that. I think this is a great square. So I'm staring towards the king side and still watching over 
the D6 point. Knight C3, maybe I want to exchange one knight. Wouldn't mind if this pawn captures. The bishop's kind of stuck. There is a pawn break. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Knight c3. Exchange knights. Queen f4. Bishop there. Okay, so he's going in for that maneuver. So. So if I take here, the pawn has to capture. In this, maybe there's that move. Hmm. I don't want to take that bishop. <laughs> um, I definitely wouldn't take it hoping for this bad reply either. So something else I should watch out for is that this knight maneuver, you know, the pressure on, C there could be some pressure on C6. So I wonder if I could maybe welcome a knight exchange. I think this guy is white's best piece right now. Also, yeah, no, I don't want to take that knight either. I don't want to take this or that. Let's see what their best piece is. I think it's this guy. Try and get rid of it. I think I could. As mentioned, again, I would not mind seeing both knights come off. This is a step in the direction of having the knights come off. Knight here, knight e5, I could take. Pawn takes, exchange rooks, and then queen takes pawn. Let's do this. Let's welcome a knight exchange. Oh, it's more than welcoming a knight exchange. I'm, I have pressure on d4, so this is definitely a forcing move. I'm giving some direction to white. Okay, we got a, another exchange. It's been a while. Now, rook d4. This is opened up. Knight e5. So I could think about superior minor piece positions. If I'm allowed to now exchange here, then I have this knight that is wonderful, but I'm going to still keep this guy here. Knight on f6. Knight e4. Takes. Queen takes. And probably pivot here. Bishop might get kicked. I fall back, and then I look to reroute my queen. Okay, going in that direction. So this is always one of those cases where is this a worthwhile check to insert? And then draw uh, fall back? I'm going to say it is, because maybe one day this pawn is sensitive. Some knight move, and then I'm within checking distance. So I'm going to flick that one in. And then hurry back. 2f7, pretty much, or excuse me, c7. King side. I want to be on the king side. So these squares are covered. This knight, I'm going to have these squares covered. Queen here, knight move, queen coming over towards the king side. Okay. Let's start with this one. Any fancy moves? I don't think I'm tactically vulnerable in any way. Okay. So if I play knight here, I guess the knight's going to go there, but then I could play here. Seems very active. Okay. Let's go for this. They're going to duck the exchange. They have a lot of pieces on d6. Bishop, pawn, but I could always remove one defender. I have enough support. Okay, so here we are. We have both knights off. Don't want to take with the pawn. I want to work on this backward pawn. If I'm taking with a pawn, then this guy isn't really seen as a, a target. I can't put pressure on it along the D file, and I want I want to be able to do that. So 
my plan here is to pile up on this guy. Queen h4, rook here. Also, I should keep in mind this pawn break. Possibly taking advantage of uh, a pin on the d-file. It's easy to end up in a, a pin. Also, there are these ideas forming a battery into h2. So there's no way to get at this point. Stopping queen h4 with that last move. Okay. Did I get my queen here? <laughs> Wouldn't mind the queen exchange. I think that would make my task easier to try and convert better bishop in the ending. Okay. Let's go with queen right here. Queen g5. New piece ready to enter. I have pressure on the rook. It's defended well enough. Nearby there could be queen f5 if I want to get the queen exchange. I may be running back like this with my bishop. Yeah, get the queens off. Something like this. And then some push. I'm going to see how white manages to hold on to this pawn. I mean, bishop there is... A tall pawn. You know, this guy isn't the most productive. It's... Just going to be a defensive piece, as far as I could see from this point on. Let's see. Tough to suggest a move for white. I'm not sure how to improve the position and not weaken the position. Approaching the two-minute mark. All of a sudden, I'm... Um, Head on the clock. I'm not in a rush to play rook here. Okay, so this is really close to forcing the queens off. This is the best piece on white side, at least. Double rooks first. Let's not double rooks first. Let's play here straight away. Why am I staying away from this? It may be that if white maybe tries a break with b3, maybe I want to keep that guy still in a4. Okay, so ducking the queen exchange. All right, well, I wonder, as odd as this may look, I wonder if this is an idea still. Trying to play it where maybe I'll have an easier time taking advantage of this pinned pawn. Eventually, after I come back over, I don't have a lot of time to work out all the details. Hmm. Should I be playing this first? Let's go here. Go with this one first. This move, my queen, she could be attacked, but long ways off from being trapped. This is my plan. Staying flexible. Put pressure here first. Yeah, this seems like a nice, healthy... Healthy move. Bishop d8, bishop f6. Maybe I poke around, try and provoke a weakness. Oh, no, that's hitting all on its own. So, oh, I mean, right about now, I am much more inclined to maybe go for this, as weird as that looks, to give up that strong bishop. Um... Hmm, that's a really interesting move. Maybe maybe I should be playing with this. 
I weaken my own king position. But... Hmm. Maybe, maybe I could withdraw the rook. Queen takes pawn, queen takes pawn. Check. Gotta hurry up, I'm under a minute. No, I don't know that I like that idea. Let's go with this one. Still not entirely clear to me how to break this down. Very weakening, the F4 move, but how am I taking advantage of it exactly? What about this right now, actually? I think this is good. Breaking down this structure. Trying to do something on this diagonal. Trying to maybe demonstrate this bishop is better than this one. All right, this guy is not offsetting the bishop on c7, so I am successfully breaking down this structure, so let's break this up, and do what next? Target this guy, I think. Let's go queen here. Watch over this as well. This pawn is pinned. If I could get these two moves in, that would be wonderful. This is also a move. Yeah, this is maybe even more aggressive, not giving white the time to play this, possibly, to open up the bishop's eyes. So if this, this, ha the, the, the threat against h3 must be met, and then I could plant this rook here. Okay, so even right now, this move first. Threatening to win the queen. And now this guy gets here. Really big focus on the light squares. These guys are all very weak. This is my weakest pawn, but it's not accessible. Now I could look to pinpoint this guy. Seems like this one's going to be secure. I should have also considered a check. There was a check for these past couple moves, wasn't there? Actually, after that first capture, queen e4 should have been on my mind. All right. What about now? Queen e4 check. Let's go for queen e4 check right now. No time for mate. I'm prepared to play g6 to defend the mate threat. Even though it opens up this diagonal, I don't plan on budging with this rook. Okay, so we have a queen, the offer of a queen exchange. Take. Now I am winning this. Oh no, it's more than a pawn. And this rook is stuck. I think they had a take with the king. Okay, so just double checking everything. I'm coordinated, winning a pawn, and the exchange next. Okay, they resigned. All right, good game. All right, let's hop into the analysis board. Very tight game. Let me flick on the engine, or that somebody already clicked it there. So, actually, before I even click on the engine, let me just kind of skim through. Um, this isn't the most common move, but 
yeah, it seems really, really level for quite some time. I don't, I think A3 is maybe where the engine will say, oh, I don't know about that move. I'm like, okay, let's, let's just maybe see right around here. Not going to be a huge shift or anything, but what is it suggesting here? Yeah, knight to c3. Trying to exchange off this knight maybe a little bit sooner might have been a, a way forward. But I feel like I gained, however, again, however slight, a little something here with this arrangement. Yeah, what's the, what's the graph saying? It's still crunching the numbers. B5, yeah. And I think that's the best reply, yeah, C5. Takes, I would have liked, I, I wanted to see that. Was, I wanted that in there. Then, then we would definitely get some exchanges. We have an open C file. You could see at least one set of rooks coming up, probably two. And I had these light squares to work with, so it's... You know, th this guy really ended up not being the most productive throughout. Is the graph done? What does it have to say? Yeah, there we go. I mean, super duper level for the first 19 moves. Knight d5, and then a different plan, I guess, here for white. Wasn't easy to break through. I mean, this isn't some decisive advantage, really. Got 37 moves in. It's pretty even. I guess this is where white is going wrong. Best is to exchange queens and then improve the king. Try and hang onto the pawn. So this, this move will maybe only after... I should have pointed this out only after the queens are off, but to play it right now with the queens on, probably asking for trouble. Now comes the h5 idea with h4, and it's officially broken down. So even without, you know, the miss in the end, losing the pawn, and then the exchange right here, um this structure there's no there's no real save to it at this point everything's still coordinated you could pinpoint this guy this guy this guy and the king is safe throughout all of it okay so what more to maybe have a look at i'm not really sure this was a well played game slow going throughout um yeah i think there were some nice decisions here made by white this this right here trying to do something with the dark dark squares maybe that knight maneuver was at least an attempt um yeah i don't know very 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 tight game here positional throughout okay anyhow feel free as usual to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away that's all for now. Take care. Bye.